The International Christian Embassy Jerusalem is your embassy in the heart of Israel, founded in 1980. From our headquarters in Jerusalem through our branches in over 80 nations and yours in Canada, we seek to challenge the church to take up its scriptural responsibility to remind Israel of the promises made to her in the Bible and to be a source of practical assistance to all the people in the land of Israel. On today's program, Reverend Malcolm Heading speaks on spiritual conflicts. Part two of our visit to Spiceway in the Western Galilee. Our panel discusses the Isaiah 62 prayer initiative. Do you know that you have a hedge around you? It's true. You have a hedge, you have a hedge around you so that the devil cannot attack you when and how he likes. If you listen to many Christians, you get the feeling that the devil's really attacking them every single day. Unbelievable. Everything's a devil. I learned that lesson years ago when I was a young minister in South Africa. In those days, Assembly of God ministers had a manse. Remember those days? Do you know what a manse is? <laughs> it's a house. And we had a car. And I have was uh, assigned a bright yellow Volkswagen. <laughs> That's the real term if you know you're German. A bright yellow Volkswagen. Beetle. Not the new ones, you know, that are fancy and full of automatic gears and all that stuff. No, no, it was the real deal. <laughs> it had a stick. Remember that? You know what a stick is? <laughs> My children have no idea. What? And I lived in a house with a long driveway. And I tell you, one thing I was proud about is how I could get into that car in the morning, start it up, drop the handbrake, foot on the clutch, car in gear, release the clutch, foot on the accelerator. Man, I went down that driveway, out into the road, put it into first gear and off I went. I had this down to an art. I was really proud of it. I don't think many of you could do that today. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I could. <laughs> anyway, one morning I got into my car. I went through my routine, snug, and this is it. I love doing it. Into reverse, accelerator, down, down the driveway, bang, smash the gates off the hinges. <laughs> Oh, my. Actually, the car was no damage. Those cars had those robust steel bumpers. The gate was a mess. I jumped out the car and said, I rebuke you, devil. <laughs> oh, yeah, just like you. you. Don't laugh. You laugh at yourself. I'm telling you now, the Holy Spirit said to me in that moment, you rebuke who? <laughs> that wasn't the devil, it was you. <laughs> yeah. I'm not minimizing the, the power of spiritual conflict, but we blame the devil for a lot of things that he never did. And by that, we give a false picture of what our Christian faith is all about. When you were transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son, you were really transferred into a wonderful kingdom where the devil cannot touch you when and how he wants to. Amen. Look at 1 John 5.18. We know that whoever is born of God does 518, 1 John 518, that's the wrong one. Oh, that is. We know that whoever <laughs> we know that whoever is born of God does not sin. 
He says it again, but he who has been born of God keeps himself little age, and the wicked one, what? What do you think the words does not touch him mean? <laughs> it's powerful, right? Yes. The devil can't touch you when and how he likes. That's not theology. That's devaluing what Jesus did for you. He delivered you from the devil. Actually from all demonic power. But, but, there comes a time when he will take away the hedge from your life and allow the devil to have a go at you that is regulated. Listen to me. There comes a time when he'll take away the hedge from you and allow the devil to do nothing but present you with options. To test whether you can be trusted to hold the sacred things and ministry of Jesus in the world. Did you hear me? So the devil came to God and said, well, uh, I've been walking up and down the earth. And God said, hmm, what have, you, what have you been doing? I've been looking at your children. I'd love to stamp all over them, but I cannot because you have them protected. But God said, hmm, okay. And if they are not protected, they will blaspheme you to your face. And God said, okay, have you thought about Job then? What do you think about him? The devil said, he will curse you to your face if you let me have a go at him. And God said, what? Okay. It's regulated. You cannot destroy him, but you can put him to the test. Now, Jesus came to Peter. Now, listen, look at this verse. Is everybody with me? <clears throat> Luke chapter 21, 31. Look at Luke chapter 21 and 31. Wonderful verse. Jesus came to Peter, and the interesting thing about the original language uh, is this. He actually said to Peter, Peter, I have to tell you something. And... Uh, Jesus said, it's this, the devil has demanded permission to sift you like wheat, like wheat. And I want you to know, Peter, that I've given it. <laughs> hmm. So that you can be tested. So that I know <clears throat> that I can faithfully trust you with my holy things. The Greek says the devil has asked to have you. How's that? The devil has asked permission to have you. And Jesus said, I've given that. And so you know the story that the hedge is taken away from Peter and Peter is just faced with choices. A little girl at the fire where they're warming themselves says to him, you talk funny. <laughs> you don't talk like we do. You talk funny. Peter's now really getting worried. She says, you know what? You talk with a Nazarene accent. You're from the Galilee. Now Peter's really getting worried. Then she says, you know what? You're one of his disciples, aren't you? I know who you are. You are also 
possibly involved with treason as he is. Oh, that's the implication. And Peter begins to swear and to curse that he doesn't know him. But Jesus had said to him, you know, Peter, when you are strengthened after this experience, go and be a blessing to your brothers. The Bible calls this temptation. You know what the word temptation means in the Hebrew? The word temptation in the Hebrew means to be put to the proof. It means to be proved. To be put to the proof. And so the book of James, listen to what James says. Is everybody with me? The book of James, listen to what he has to say. Chapter 1, verse 12 to 15. Notice the wording, notice the wording. This is pest-regulated conflict. Blessed is the man that is greatly to be envied. That's the Hebrew, uh, the Greek. Greatly to be envied is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Up next... Part two of our visit to Spiceway in the Western Galilee. Using spices in the kitchen, you know, you it's a it's a golden gold golden touch. You know, golden touch. Yes, yes. You, you put some spices, you know, not big amount, and it's make amazing things because all the spices are medicines. So I tried to to understand it better, and I. I learned and become a herbalist, and, and now in Israel, I, you know, I, I talk a lot in the Israeli radio and shows in television, write books, and uh, trying to understand better what is the duty of these spices in our life uh, in order to, 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 to achieve benefits of health. All right. Uh, and the kitchen, is, it's a good place, it's a warm place, and spicy kitchen, right. it's, a, it's, it's something good for us. You know, if, we, if it will be spicy kitchen more and more, we will see less and less uh, the MD, the, the, the medicine doctor. I believe in this. So I haven't... You have here a bowl of black cumin seeds. Yes, it's a common name. It's okay. a, the botanic name is Nigella. Nigella. Uh, it's, uh, you know, you can find it a lot in, in the Middle East, especially in Turkey. Right. Uh, it's a huge demand, is, is especially for, you know, to cook some bread with bread, adding it to cheese, to the salad. We have to crush it a little bit. You crush it? Yeah, yes. And then uh, you put, you know, one teaspoon in a day for your salad. For a salad, and, yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's make a, um, un unbelievable things in our body. Well, so what, what unbelievable thing will black <laughs> cumin do in our bodies? <laughs> <laughs> For example, you are very sweet now, and uh, you know it can reduce your sugar in your blood, oh, oh, rate of okay. the sugar. This is good for those who might be borderline diabetic. It, it's, yes, it supports okay. the, the insulin. We understand better oh, now. Okay. Uh, all the you know we can explain everybody about it, Nigella, and how to use it safely. Right. So in Israel. We started to talk about the Nigella before more than 10 years, and the demand of Nigella in Israel, you know, it's is now 10, 10 times higher. 10 times higher Amazing. because they've caught on. Because the television. So is it proven to help with the blood sugar levels yes, yes, in the body? It, it's a, okay. And how much would a person have to consume to make that effective? N a nothing. It's, a day? So, yes, Just a little a day? Even less. Okay. Even less. All right. Just ground it a little bit and put it All in right. your salad. And also for dementia, for supporting the liver, right. you know, uh, uh, a, a lot of minerals and, and other components, good components in the Nigella. And the uh, kitchen with Nigella is something that can keep the, you and your parents and your, your child better all life like we, I don't know the slogan in Israel, I, I will say it in Hebrew, okay. Uh, Nigella in Hebrew called Ketzach. Ketzach? Ketzach. 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 So we, we say, Ketzach lechayei Netzach. 
קצח לחיי נצח, is in, in English, that's something that if you take it, you, you are not going to die. אוקיי, turmeric and add turmeric to everything, to rice, to, you know, yes. to keep to the to it's vegetables. It's not spicy. It's this yellow root, it's right? Yeah, it's also a nice color or a nice, yes. nice smell. But if you drink turmeric first like, thing in the morning yes. with, with water. Yes. Okay. Plain water. With not, oh, yeah. uh, and support it with a little bit of um, black pepper. Black pepper? Yes. It's like a medicine. Every day, you know, you're starting the day. with turmeric, put it in the water and black pepper uh, to increase the, the, you know, the turmeric goes, goes inside. Uh, uh, so you get a, a benefit from outside, consistent, I don't know, you get benefit uh, every day with the turmeric and uh, it's every day it's clean you, it makes, you know, or, yes, it's some, it support a lot of things, uh, you know, in, in our body. So your body loves this stuff. Yes, yes, okay. and, and, and in Israel, I, I know there are more thousands of people that while starting talking about the turmeric before 10, uh, 15 years, uh, people starting the, uh, before work and starting the day, they uh, are consumers of turmeric with water. Just do it also in your country. We'll do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Isaiah chapter 62, verses 4 to 7. You shall no more be termed forsaken, nor shall your land be termed desolate, but you shall be called My delight is in her, and your land married, for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so your sons shall marry you, And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so your God shall rejoice over you. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem, who shall never hold their peace day or night. You who remind the Lord, do not keep silent. Give him no rest until he establishes and makes Jerusalem a glory in the earth. Hello and welcome back to Inside Israel. I'm Christine Williams and welcome to our panel discussion, an exciting panel today, Fatine, Jude and Pastor Tech. We're going to begin by talking about prayer because ICEJ is in the business of prayer. I'm going to turn it over to Jude now to discuss our prayer initiative with ICEJ and what it means to you personally as well. ICEJ uh, began an initiative several years ago called the Isaiah 62 Prayer Movement. And it's one day per month, a Wednesday, the first Wednesday of every month, where we set aside the day to fast and pray for Israel, mm -hmm. Jerusalem, and the Jewish people. And there's always so many different things to pray for, but we get a prayer directive from Jerusalem and we follow it through. Now, in our Canadian branch, we've elected to host um, a national webinar where people from across the country can sign on and pray with us. And we do that every month at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, I just want to invite the uh, audience to consider signing up, joining up. It, uh, it's one hour, once a month, that we pray together online. Uh, other than that, it's up to you yourself in your own quiet time with the Lord to seek the Lord. Isaiah 62 says, for Zion's sake, I will not um, hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. And we really call out to God during the Isaiah 62 day of fasting and prayer. And uh, it's been remarkable, the fruit. Jude, mm. what are some of the prayer requests that you personally pray or that's on that list for people oh, who join that prayer initiative? It can be pretty much anything that is happening in Israel at any given time. Um, we often will pray for um, Bibi Netanyahu as the leader and his uh, Knesset associates and, 
and the political people, the leader of the IDF, just whatever is happening. Uh, sometimes, in particular, we'll pray for protection for Israel. Um, just so many different issues. We often pray for our aid projects mm -hmm. uh, because we have multiple aid projects going on in Israel all the time, and they all need to be covered, especially with all of um, our new refugees coming in through Alia and uh, the shoulder to shoulder project that we handle, that we look after. It's um, it's always. Everything is always in need of prayer. <laughs> That's so, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to continue along the lines of ladies first. We'll get to you soon. <laughs> Pastor Tech. Pastor Tech. Tech. Hey, team, oh, you are amazing. known. You are well known as a woman of prayer in terms of your entire ministry. Tell us a little bit about your ministry and, after that, what Israel means to you. Yeah, well, it's, it's so great to be here, and it's so amazing to hear about this initiative in greater depth. Uh, one of the ministries that I lead is called The Cry, and what we do through The Cry is, is we gather the entire nation in these days of prayer and fasting, um, basically in the model of Joel 2. It's a solemn assembly where we come to pray and humble ourselves before the Lord, asking Him to move in Canada. And the very first cry that I ever led was actually in 2006. And Jude, I'll never forget <laughs> when the Holy Spirit spoke to me at the beginning of that cry, when we were preparing, praying through the schedule. And I remember him coming just close to me in, in, in a time of prayer and saying, you know, Faitine, I love that you're responding to the call to rally people to pray for Canada. I love that. And I will hear prayer. And he was affirming that. But then there was like a gentle whisper of his heart to, to my spirit at that moment. And he said, but before you pray for your nation, will you pray for my nation? And at that moment, I just felt something of God's heart for his natural family. You know, as believers in Yeshua, we're his spiritual family, mm -hmm. but he has a natural family. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, the, the people of Israel. And so we decided from that moment on, that was the very first cry that I ever led back 11 years ago now, that at the beginning of every single National Solemn Assembly for Canada, that we would begin yep. by praying for Israel. Yep. And, and we've done it right through to this day. And I believe it's one of the reasons we've actually seen shifts uh, on the days of the Solemn Assembly because the Bible's clear, you know, those who bless Israel will be blessed and, and it's so important. Yes. One of the ways we can bless Israel is through prayer. That's right. Exactly. That's right, Pastor Tack. Well, Where are you when it comes to the land of Israel mm -hmm. and what are some of your prayer requests? This is something I want our, our audience to, to listen to and mm -hmm. to try to, because there are many people that are going to be watching and saying, I'm interested in this. I'm interested mm -hmm. in Israel. And I know it's, it's in scripture. We're supposed to bless Israel, mm -hmm. pray for the peace of Israel. But still, there are many of those that ask the question, what exactly are we praying for? And does it differ as we go from generation to generation? What are some of the important items that you would add to your prayer list? Well, in, in, in our case, in our church, we have uh, set aside the first Sunday of the month as our Israel ministry day. And so we uh, took the time, and we take the time to pray for Israel. Now, we are always guided by uh, an acronym when we pray for uh, Israel, and it's uh, S-O-N-G, it's a song. So we sing, but S is we pray foremost is the self, see the inner peace of the Jews. Mm, wow, see, powerful. they are always troubled inside. Powerful. You know, the peace is not just an yes. absence of uh, hostilities mm -hmm. and those things. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's an inner peace. Mm -hmm. And then the all is others within the community. So that's why in, in, in Psalm 122, verse 6, we are told to pray for the peace. And in the following verse, it says that, may there be peace within your walls, meaning among them. So that's the others within the community. And then the end would be the neighbors, because they cannot be an island. Mm -hmm. See, the moment that they step out of the walls of Jerusalem, they are in the world. So they have to pray peace uh, yes. among the neighbors too. And the G is peace with God. Mm, powerful. <laughs> right? Now, faith is a huge dimension to this mm -hmm. kind of a prayer. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's no secret what um, mm -hmm. Israel faces today, the challenges mm -hmm. to its very existence and mm -hmm. the constant um, threats of intifadas, of attacks. Mm -hmm. and, and this is something, and, and, and I'm just going to throw it to all three of you, whichever mm -hmm. one of you may want to speak into this, mm -hmm. that when you're in the middle of praying about mm -hmm. the peace of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. what comes upon your heart at times, particularly when the news is filled mm -hmm. with, with turbulent issues that, mm -hmm. that point to no peace, and yet we're pay, praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Take it away, any one of you. I'll just begin with uh, one thing that we do with the Isaiah 62 initiative is 
all of our different branches of the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem, all of the branches will pray that day. And that represents millions of Christians around the world. And we are all praying through the same prayer points and focus. And so our people in Jerusalem are very current and up to date with what is actually happening. And uh, so that's what we are praying for. And it's absolutely wonderful uh, because I'll get um, information coming from some of the different branches in the different countries. And it's marvelous to see that they are standing together in unity to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And, yes. uh, and that is part of the reason why when UNESCO, and I don't want to get political, but when UNESCO came out uh, against Jerusalem, do you know they received thousands and thousands of Bibles with all the references mm -hmm. to Jerusalem highlighted <laughs> <laughs> from members of ICEJ internationally. So, that's wonderful. yeah, that it's is quite, wonderful. It's quite and, an, and that's a great note to end on because yep. I don't think he can really discuss Israel without <laughs> touching on a little bit of the political realities. <laughs> You're a great team. I'd like to thank you so much for joining us Thanks, for this Christine. segment. Thank you, Christine. We conclude our program today with some sights and sounds within Israel. Thank you for joining us today and be sure to visit our website at www.icejcanada.tv or call us at 1-866-324-9133. And for our Canadian residents, you can ask for your free Canada Israel pin. Through your contribution, you can participate by giving to ICEJ Canada to the Haifa Home for Holocaust Survivors, Women at Risk Red Carpet Project, Operation Life Shield Bombproof Shelters, Shoulder to Shoulder Alias Support, School for the Deaf, Beit Singer Children's Home, Israel in Crisis, Beit Rachel Strauss Inclusive Community, Magan David Adam Emergency Services, Christian Friends of Yed Vashem, Scholarships for Canadian Young Adults to Experience Israel, Educational Fund, ICEJ Communication Media Fund, Gift Estate Securities Funds,